During your time in Skyrim, you're gonna have to make a lot of difficult choices. But sometimes, a choice will come along that, for whatever reason, you absolutely get wrong and end up regretting for the rest of the playthrough. So, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at just that. Here are 8 choices you immediately regret making in Skyrim. Number 1. Killing Cicero Of all the characters in Skyrim, few are as entertaining to speak with as Cicero. This Elder Scrolls equivalent of the Joker may be deranged in more ways than one, but you can't deny his loyalty to his fellow assassins and the Night Mother. And the further you delve into the Dark Brotherhood questline, the more this is shown, right up until the very end where you have to kill him. This may sound like something sensible at first. After all, he did try to kill our boy Vizara, but the fact of the matter is that Cicero is the most loyal member of the Brotherhood there is. Unlike Astrid, Cicero stays true to the Five Tenants, even going so far as to not kill Vizara and Ambjorn despite getting the better of them both. This is in stark contrast to Astrid's leadership, who runs the Dark Brotherhood like a glorified bandit gang. And worst of all, killing Cicero means that he'll no longer be available as a companion after the questline is over, which is a huge loss since he's one of the best followers you can have. He has maximum sneak, no regard for crimes being committed, and enough crazy voice lines to keep anyone entertained. Number 2. Joining the Stormcloaks Deciding between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials is a choice as old as the game itself. But after learning the truth about the Stormcloaks, it's going to be very hard to justify ever joining them. Not only is Ulfric's rebellion full of racists and corruption, but key evidence reveals that their leader has had a particularly shady past. Although Ulfric is revered by many Nords, their support is misguided, as Ulfric is pretty much confirmed to be a puppet for the Thalmor. All of this can be found in the Thalmor dossier on Ulfric's Stormcloak, which goes into detail about his capture during the campaign for White Gold Tower, his interrogation, and how he's remained an asset for the Thalmor ever since. The dossier even ends by stating that an Imperial victory would harm their overall position in Skyrim. So, all in all, even if you set aside Ulfric's racist beliefs and negligible intelligence, you'll know that as long as you're pro-Empire, then you're anti-Thalmor, which is certainly a good enough reason for me. Number 3. Helping Sven One of the first dilemmas you're going to come across is the love affair in Riverwood, where Sven the Bard and Feindor the Woodworker are both fighting for the same woman's heart. Unfortunately for Camilla, the woman in question, these two suitors have some wicked means to make sure that their competitor has no chance of clapping that imperial booty, and all they need is your help in delivering the message. And so, you must choose who to wingman and who to leave in the dust. Your decision will determine which character will hate you and which one will become your follower. But the thing is, it's not even a question. Feindel is a much better follower than Sven could ever be. Not only is he competent with a bow, but he also doubles as a bow trainer. And since you can trade with your followers, this means that you can instantly trade back the gold you spent on Feindel training you, essentially giving you levels in archery for free. And if you side with Sven, all you get is another generic follower who is best used as a human meat shield. Number 4. Killing Your Spouse Whether we're talking about real life or Skyrim, finding the perfect partner isn't easy. Though Skyrim has all sorts of soulmates, spanning from the divine to the delinquent, the difficult decision remains. Which one will you marry? To make things worse, Skyrim takes commitment seriously. Very seriously. So much so that you're going to have to spend the rest of your playthrough with the spouse of your choice with no possibility of divorce or separation. So, players who are unhappy with their virtual marriage and unable to dump them will do the next best thing. Kill their spouse. After all, the saying is, till death do us part. But anyone who thought they could relive the single life will quickly find that they were sorely mistaken. Despite your spouse being dead, the game makes no effort to revert you into an unmarried state. Thus, you're stuck as a widower, your children hate you, you're unmarried, unloved, and alone. It sounds a lot like real life, doesn't it? <laughs> Number 5. Giving Thirsk Mead Hall Back from picking giant Nern roots to genetically engineering spiders, your travels across Solstheim will lead you to situations of all kinds. One of the more standout encounters has to do with a group of Nord hunters who lost their home in Thirskmead Hall to a gang of Reiklings no less. Being the pro-human dragonborn that you are, you decide that the best course of action is to help the Nords take the hall back from these goblin-looking creatures and go back to business as usual, right? Wrong. 
Despite how contrary to the rest of the game it may sound, giving Thirsk Mead Hall back to the Nort Hunters is a terrible decision. See, the Nords didn't lose the hall through coercion or malice, but rather through their incompetence. Instead of facing any challenge, these Nord Hunters grew to become lazy milk drinkers. By the time a formidable foe came about, they were too inept to do anything about it. Although this might sound harsh to an Imperial, many Nords believe that might makes right. So, even though the Reichlings may have taken the hall by force, it's still seen as a commendable action by the Nords. And it's not like the Reichlings are a bunch of savages. Despite how they may come off, these little creatures are intelligent, can speak fluently with other races, and clearly have better tactics and strategy than the Nords. And how can you not side with these little guys when you're rewarded with a small army of them in return for your aid in protecting their rifle hold of Thirskmead Hall? It's certainly better than the stab in the back you get for siding with the Nords. Number 6. Stealing the Elder Gleam Restoring the Gilder Green is one of the first moral choices you're going to come across in your playthrough. Upon entering the Temple of Kinnereth in Whiterun, you're asked to cut off a piece of bark from the Elder Gleam, an ancient tree that is said to be blessed with Kinnereth herself. But, like all encounters with deities, things can take a bloody turn for the worst. Most players will be unaware of a choice even existing and simply go to the Elder Gleam Sanctuary to steal the bark. And when they do, things end up taking a turn for the worst. An enraged army of Spriggans appear out of nowhere and slaughters all the innocent pilgrims in the sanctuary. But hey, at least the tree in Whiterun looks pretty now, right? Well, if players were a little more keen-eyed, then they could have completed the whole quest without any bloodshed. Right after you agree to take the Nettlebane to the sanctuary, you can find a Breton pilgrim called Maurice, who you can take with you on your journey to the Elder Gleam. Doing so will have Maurice stop you from cutting the tree, and will instead have him ask Kinnereth for an offering. And being the goddess of nature that she is, a sapling for a new Gilder Green is given. And so, the priestesses back in Whiterun are happy to have a new tree, and the pilgrims in the sanctuary are happy not to get butchered by Spriggans. It's a win-win. Number 7. Doing quests too early Quests are Skyrim's bread and butter, so it might sound counterintuitive to avoid doing certain quests until you reach a certain level, but it's done with good reason. Like many other RPGs, Skyrim's best weapons are typically locked behind its quests, and thanks to the way this game handles item scaling, deciding to unlock the best weapons early will give you an item that's not anywhere near as powerful as it should be. So, god-tier weapons like the Chillrend and Dawnbreaker are going to be about as useful as an iron sword by the time you reach endgame levels. And since there's no way to upgrade these weapons to bring them back to their glory, you're stuck with a weak weapon for the rest of your playthrough. Number 8. Framing Branche Among all the unfortunate sods that have their lives ruined at the hands of the Thieves Guild, Branche is the first. This dumber trader finds himself at the wrong end of a Thieves Guild contract, takes the fall for a theft that he did not commit, and is forced to live out the rest of his days in the Riften Jail. Scenarios like these are plentiful in the Thieves Guild, and it's a big reason why good-natured players avoid this questline entirely. But, despite not being able to turn the Thieves' Guild into a band of divine worshippers, you can at least spare the life of Bran Shea. Early in your recruitment into the Guild, Brynjolf will ask you to steal Medesi's ring and plant it into Bran Shea's pocket. Doing so will land him in jail and probably be spiteful of the Dragonborn. But, a far more humane approach would be to simply lie to Brynjolf and tell him that you lost the ring. Sure, you'll look like a buffoon, but luckily for you, Brynjolf isn't exactly the sharpest tool in the shed either, and will let you join the guild despite botching the entire job. And best of all, you can do all that without having Branche's injustice on your conscience. Might say that's an absolute win. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.